Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Netter's Network Thursday Things. We will be having a very special guest this evening. who's running just a little bit late, so we appreciate your patience. But in the meantime, let me introduce my wonderful and sexy co-host, that guy at the end of the bar, Troy Pichelli. How are you doing tonight, sweetie, and what are you sipping on? Sweetie. Oh, sorry. I was <laughs> I was still over. On, <laughs> I was still over on Midnight's Edge. I know where your loyalties lie. No, I mean he was just. Uh, Tom was just saying. I don't know if it's a watch party if we're just talking about the Spice Diver. I should be up to date on this, and I was just letting him know it is. Yeah, in fact, a watch party. Unless we're gonna just talk for three hours. Well, I know, right? <laughs> So, how are you doing tonight, sweetie? And what are you sipping I am on? doing well, and I am double fisting it because I have a uh, uh, a diet grapefruit soda and a Rockstar Energy drink. Of course, the Rockstar Energy drink is because, well, Thanks. you. <laughs> well, I have a headache, and I can't drink I it get it. I get it. Anything I can do to help you get through your headache, I am more than happy. I appreciate that. Um, and of course, the um, Cosmic Link is pinned to the top of the stream, or pop, stream, top of the chat, so that you can follow along. You're just going to right click on that, open it up in a new tab, and you'll be able to follow us on Cosmic. Yep, yep. Or follow the movie on Cosmic. It's like, wait, I got, oh, okay, I had an extra screen open. I'm like, what is this extra screen I have open? Where is... What's the tech? Okay. What's the technical difficulty? My copy link wasn't letting me click on it. Oh, oh, oh! Fair enough. Fair enough. It was giving me a hard time. I was not happy. Yeah, uh, technology, and it's it's not always us boomering either. Lately, you know, there's been some some goofy stuff going on with Streamyards and YouTube and a lot of the platforms. So you know. Bear with us. They're banding against us. I, I kind of feel that way sometimes. <laughs> I really, really do. Well, while we're waiting for our guest to arrive and kind of, what do you call it, vamp? For yeah. Well, it's not really vamping since this is what we would be doing That's anyway. That's true. But we're stalling at any, at any rate. So let us say hello to our lovely chat, starting with Orville Nation. Yeah, he He's was here nation. early. He may not even still be here. I don't know. Yep, he was here at 6.46 p.m. Central Time. In so fairness, was, I think he's in old. Spain, so he's oh. like, you know, middle of the night there, I think, or maybe it's early morning. Oh, could be. We also have Curtis Selby. How you doing, sweetie? We get that last call guy. Howdy. No, I think he's got a crush on me. I really do. <laughs> we have Connie Clear saying hello to the chat. FKHC2005 saying hello. Howdy, howdy. Deleted scenes, giving his salute. Is it going to show up? There it is. So. It's like hesitating before it shows <coughs> my what I've selected. JPR to PH1. How you doing, sweetie? Hey, John. Lady V. Ellis. How you doing, sweetie? For those of you who aren't aware, she's my personal stalker. <laughs> See? See, yeah, exactly. We have Big Al Presents. I hope you can stay with us for a bit tonight, Big Al. I know you've been uh, saying you've nodded off a couple of times. It's fair. Yeah, it's like I tried taking a nap after work. Didn't work. I just couldn't sleep. Um, let's see. Try not to make the chat jump. And of course, there's that netter person saying hello to everybody. <laughs> uh, there's Curtis. H. Boomer, how you doing, Boomer? Let's see. We have a new person in our chat, Rob Altus. Rob Altus, yes. How you doing, sweetie? Thanks for joining us. Jesse Guajardo. Hey, sweetie. Mm -mm -mm -mm. We have a Dega Outlaw in the house. How you doing, a sweetie? A Dega! Doctor and author. Yep. Lester San Jose, the skeptic tank. How you doing, sweetie? Hello, humans. Welcome to the chat. Hey, Thade. 
shadow chaser. Hey, sweetie. I have a couple of new people in my chat. That's wonderful to see. Yeah, thanks for the uh, uh, thanks to Tom and, and Six for the, uh, um, the Midnight's Edge After Dark raid. Super appreciate yep. you guys. Um, I think I'm at the bottom. You got Lester, month. right? I did get Lester. Then I think we're caught up unless someone else jumps in here. Okay, yes. Awesome. Curtis so says we are dangerously close to a hundred watchers. Wait, really? That no, that can't be. Is that right? Eighty nine watching now. Wow. Wow, guys, you are you are just incredible. Yeah, this that's all because of uh, uh, yeah, Tom and Tom. Six. Thanks, guys. So yes, uh, there was a question over on Midnight's Edge after dark. Uh, this is going to be a watch party. So if you want to hang around with us, and you know, Tom, when you get here, if you can't stay all, all it's almost three hours. If you can't stay, I totally understand, but. We are going to dive into the Spice Diver cut, uh, the fan edit of uh, the David Lynch uh, Dune. Just seemed appropriate. First couple weeks that the new Dune 2 is out that uh, I finally get around to this. And I couldn't do it without uh, pulling in Tom Connors because he is a subject matter expert. He made me feel really bad because I, uh, I didn't have him here. Uh, a couple, well, over on my channel a couple weeks back when I was talking about physical media, and I will not make that mistake again. I want to make sure that he knows how honored he is. Absolutely. Um, and of course, I love having subject matter experts on my channel. Um, we had someone on that was a Twin Peaks uh, subject matter expert, and Troy just fanboyed. Yeah, we, we, I, I think we ended up talking for about another hour after the show ended, you know, in the back. Yeah, so I mean, not only did my Thursday things run about, it was it was over two hours, and normally this is an hour show. Uh, afterwards, I, they just continued the conversation. It was really incredible. So I love seeing y'all here. And I think I also dropped Hi Sweeties in the chat to everyone that came in. Oh, hi Penny, and hi Dad Ben Walking. Hey, my sweetie's doing. Oh, Penny, great to see you. And if y'all wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. Tonight, uh, I think Netter's going to be incredibly encouraged by uh, such a big audience and, and, and so much feedback. You guys uh, are super awesome. Yeah, you guys are absolutely wonderful. So thank you for being here. I hope you enjoy the viewing tonight. Um, as Troy mentioned, the Cosme link is pinned to the top of the chat. So all you have to do is right click on that. It'll open up a new tab and you can follow along. So uh, Netter, <laughs> I, I find because, you know, we've been married for 31 years, sometimes I know most of the answers that need to be asked for the purposes <laughs> of the audience. But uh, what was your first experience with Dune in general, whether it was the books, the movies, whatever? You. Yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> I figured. And was it the David Lynch Dune? Of course it was. Yeah. It's like, for those of you who don't know, my husband is a very, very big David Lynch fan. Yeah. So, any David Lynch productions, I've seen because of him. So, I watched Twin Peaks because of him. I saw Dune because of him. Um, some of his other movies I've seen because of him. So, it's like, he exposes me to movies that I have not seen before that he's like you would actually like this it may not seem like your type of movie but trust me you'll like this and he hasn't stirred me wrong yet like Heartbreak Ridge it's kind of <laughs> it, it's, it's like a you know a combat -y type of movie you know guys fighting in the military with Clint Eastwood so you know the badass and he's telling me about the story and I'm like, yeah, that actually does sound interesting. It didn't sound like, you know, your typical, you know, war movie type of thing. And I really like the movie. It's one of my favorite ones now to watch. Uh, same with um, mm. Roadhouse. I didn't think I'd like that because it's like, oh, really? A bouncer taking care of a bar? Wow. Mm, really interesting. Until he really told me about it. And it's like, okay, I'll watch it. 
I love Roadhouse. She has this way of of and and I know it, it, it it's indirectly she's encouraging me, but she she tends to get excited about movies because I tell her about them and I'm excited about them. Yeah. So that's that tends to be what uh, what uh, brings uh, brings her to. Uh, what she wouldn't otherwise uh, enjoy, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. Shadow Chaser said, "Heartbreak Ridge, Gunny Highway behaves exactly like my father did." Rest in peace. Hoorah! Yeah. Well, without further ado, I'd like to bring in our special guest. How you doing tonight, Tom? And what are you <laughs> sipping on? <laughs> Hello, fellow movie viewers. <laughs> 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 That's perfect. <laughs> Although you know, uh, when Deleted Scenes does this. He doesn't even have to change his voice. He pretty much just sounds no, like David Lynch. Oh, he sounds just like David Lynch. Can you believe it? <laughs> and how's the weather there, Tom? It is balmy. It is warm in California. How is the weather there? It is 78 degrees oh, and gee. humid. I don't know. I'm just making shit up. <laughs> well, he's, he's guessing here. California weather, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, here we got a balmy 41 degrees. So this gets me to, well, this was perfectly timed because we just talked with Netter about her background. Uh, Tom, you, I didn't realize until fairly recently, uh, you really know your Dune lore. Now, is that just because you've been listening to Nerd Cookies, or are you a Dune fan from way back? Honestly, uh... I got more of a crash course from Andre. I wouldn't even consider myself any kind of lore uh, specialist whatsoever. Wow, have but, you read the uh, books? Or any of the uh, books? I brushed through the book. <laughs> 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 That's I, some rough I, reading, I, I let me honestly, tell you. like, I mean, and here's the thing. is like, as much as I know about Dune, like, I when I say I got a crash course, I got a crash course. Like, Andre basically sent me to like dune and on and conan Co college things <laughs> I got hired. um two things that i never really knew much about but i got yeah. quickly brought up to speed like i watched the the the, the original version of dune years ago yeah. i just didn't get it didn't quite i mean i like the visuals of it i think i had a copy of it on a tape i didn't actually have the movie itself for years but i think i maybe watched it once or twice growing up oh um i don't even think i ever owned the dvd or anything like that um, so, but then Andre did his uh, one of the first videos, uh, big videos we worked on would have been his Dune one and I had to quickly get up to speed with it because uh, yeah, they were very in depth um, but you, since then, yeah, I've I've, I, I've pretty much consumed uh, all the visual material there is to on Dune. I do appreciate you you really do do your homework <laughs> but uh, it, Fade brings up a, a great point he says uh, he's read all the books uh, watched everything live action, uh, and did his English thesis on uh, Frank Herbert. Uh -huh. um, I I can't claim all of that. I have read all but Chapter House, which would be the last Frank Herbert book. Uh, and I, as I've told people, that was because you, when you're with a series this long, if you get to the last one, that's it, you know? And now I'm going to have to go back and read them from the beginning again before I do read Chapter House. Uh, did pick up some of his son's prequels, and they kind of suck. <laughs> they really, really do. I mean, it's kind of like uh, what a lot of us say about Star Wars. You know, we were all hyped for what we were going to get in the, the prequels, and it just didn't measure up. You know, it was like, uh and, and that's uh, kind of how I felt about it. But I, my, my, my foot in the door was the David Lynch film. Um, uh, people may not realize how the original David Lynch was marketed back in the day. It was, well, it was a strange movie with a strange director. And so the marketing was pretty strange. They wanted it to be Star Wars, but there was no way it was ever going to be Star Wars some real missteps with the action figures um that that could be a whole other stream but um yeah so so uh i remember seeing the um in the magazines i don't remember if it was like 
uh, Phantasmagoria or, or what it was, but seeing all these behind the scenes shots, publicity shots, and uh, you know, just wow, Sean Young. And I was like, oh, I gotta see this movie, and uh, it just hit me at the right time at the right age, you know. Um, what do you know, Tom, about this Spice Diver edit? I'm hearing it's the best interpretation of, of David Lynch's uh, vision. Yeah, so basically this is a fan edit, yep. which has kind of been adopted as an official edit of sorts. Um, it was put together by a gentleman named Spice Diver, who was a member of the, uh, the Dune boards and all that kind of stuff back mm -hmm. in the day. And uh, he collected up which I'm assuming, and I don't know specifically, but um, I'm assuming he must have gotten a hold of some kind of work print of the film, plus used all the television cut scenes. Sure. And uh, put together as close as uh, he could to the uh, shooting script with some, you know, fan interpretations of a certain things, of yeah. certain things, uh, into what uh, most consider the ultimate cut of the film. Because not only does it have... Uh, most of the footage and stuff that would have been, egg, uh, you know, excised out of the other version. Yeah. But it also finishes the special effects, which the television version never did do. For those right. who don't know, back in the day, when a big movie would premiere on television, people like Dino De Laurentiis specifically, and like the Salkinds and certain other people, they would make add a bunch of footage to their movies and make them two night events so they could sell them for a lot more money. Um, and uh, that makes Dune sense. Was no exception. But yeah. uh, Lynch was not happy with the cut that they put together, so he wanted his name taken off of it, and that's why mm. um, the television cut has always been credited to Alan Smithy. But sure. uh, I'm curious if uh, David ever saw this cut, what he would think of it. Um, as far as I know, he's never revisited the film. Uh, in recent years, he's kind of warmed up a little bit more to the idea of possibly revisiting it. Mm -hmm. But really, all they would have to do is just kind of use the Spice Diver cut as kind of a a map of sorts or whatever you want to call it or a guide yeah and and uh just do the film that way if the original footage exists i guess that's the big question uh, or not because i mean there may even be some some other stuff that we haven't seen yet that dave could pull out because, absolutely uh, true for those i who can... don't know i mean when he shot the film he shot it thinking he was going to get final cut and that's where the animosity came in at the end was when he realized he wasn't going to get final cut and they were going to chop it down to two hours uh, he thought he was going to be able to do closer to three hour cut, which is always I think all the fans say, yeah, th this and this was the same thing they said when uh, Denis Villeneuve was doing his. It's like, you know, this is not something that you can squeeze into two hours. You got to, you know, you got to give it the time that it deserves. And if that means multiple movies or whatever it takes that that's what you got to do. I can say that if I was I, I don't have any inside knowledge, but gut instinct from what I know about David Lynch, particularly a conversation that I was having with a, a, a Twin Peaks super fan last week. Um, he avoids watching anything that fans have done, fan edits, anything like that, simply because he's kind of a purist. He doesn't want to be influenced if he does anything, you know, uh, goes back and does anything. So I'm guessing, I'm going to guess he hasn't seen this Spice Diver edit. But I don't think he'd need to. He knows what his vision was, you know, and what what uh, material is still available to him and what isn't, I guess, I should think. Anyway, Tom, what I wanted to do, we can continue talking. I did want to do this as a watch party, and I do understand this is three hours long, and you have been uh, on a forced march of streaming, so I don't want you to feel you have to stay, but if you need to drop out, you certainly... Do what you need to do for yourself. Okay, but, I just want to remind everyone the Cosme link is pinned to the top of the chat. Just right click on that link and it'll open up a new um, window for you or yeah. a tab for you, and then you can just follow along. I provide uh, off platform uh, 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 the, the, the film on Cosme because one, it allows us to stay synced together, two, uh, everyone has a different circumstance with, with, uh, with, uh, um, you, whether or not you're doing some sort of, uh, 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 you get interrupted on YouTube or whatever, but that's the other thing too. If you're coming in the future and you don't have your own copy of the Spice Diver edit, my understanding is, didn't Six say it's available out there on YouTube? 
Oh, yeah, it is on YouTube. So so there you go, guys. So you can find it for yourselves out there. But uh, Okay, go. so let's get started over on Cosme. Yeah, let me... Okay, I'm ready when you are. You do the countdown. You're in, oh, you're yeah, in that makes control. sense. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. So if you guys want to right-click on that uh, link up above uh, so that you can watch along with us. If you're already there, you might need to refresh. But uh, here we go. We're going to start. Three, two, one, play. And uh, I believe this is, I'm not positive. I think this is the second version of the Spice Diver. So he, I guess he updated a few things and it's slightly better from what I hear. Uh, oh, this is his third and final reworking. Okay. So I'm actually glad he puts that kind of detail into this. And I gotta say, I am impressed as all heck by people that, that do this kind of stuff. These graphics look wonderful. Tom's not quite as impressed. He does that kind of stuff himself. <laughs> I'm not even watching it. Oh, no, I don't. I wish I could. Where does the link to watch this at? I don't know. Oh, it's at the top of the chat there. The top oh, of okay. the... Um, oh, yeah, oh. In, in, in YouTube. You I can, can put it in You could drop chat. it in the private chat, too. Yep. I will put it there. Give me just a moment. Oh, shout! Yeah, it's right on screen. I don't have to read it for you. <laughs> uh, private chat. Gosh, even okay. The there Spice is. Diver edit, like these had to be. Oh, sorry. These opening credits even had to be completely redone. I would imagine. Yeah, he Beautiful did. Eyes. Good job. Uh, yeah. Basically. Uh, doing the uh, redoing the titles and doing all the other special effects and that's what i meant more by a map is like basically they have an idea of where special effects and stuff would have to go and be if they used uh whatever he had for uh an idea because that's the thing is he went through and fixed all the stuff that wasn't finished for the tv cut yeah exactly virginia madsen i had such a crush on her back in the 80s And of course, I, I really feel like for, for everything that, that, that people say about David Lynch and you know how weird it is, the stuff he does and it doesn't make a lot of sense, I think he put a lot of thought into how do we communicate all of this very rich lore that's kind of necessary to understand the story. He finds ways to get it all in there. And here you have a narrator. She's literally the narrator of the stories in the books. So it makes sense that she should literally be the narrator. Where was this filmed? Ah, good question. I don't know. In a desert. <laughs> <laughs> uh... IMDB usually has filming locations, right? Um, oh, I don't know if I could possibly make this plunge. Samalayuca, <laughs> Chihuahua, Mexico. Hi, Six. Hey, Six. Thank you so much for stopping by. You are Hi, incredible. So in most other movies, I'd say, well, this there's a lot of exposition, but how else could you possibly communicate all of this to the audience? Well, and that's just it. They had to give out these uh, pamphlets and stuff to help explain some of this stuff. And that's the the downside of having to edit so much out of the movie. And they did the best they could getting the info in there to where when they showed it on TV, it has a whole entire new intro added on to it, um, which they worked into the Spice Diver cut. 
the uh, <laughs> you're gonna laugh at this. So I think I said earlier I saw this movie. Well, not this version of it, but the original release version of Dune before I read the book. I went and then picked up the book at the library, and it's a little bit easier sometimes with a with a really meaty book if you already have the the actors in your mind, their voices, and so forth. It kind of helps keep the characters straight. Um, and I felt like it was a little easier to understand because I had that background. And then I get to the end of the book, and I realize there's appendices there. All these references that could have helped me as I was reading the book. The glossary of terms, the background on the different planets. I'm like... And so I had to start reading all the appendices, and then... On a subsequent read of the book, it it even made more sense. Sometimes you should jump to the end of a book. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I first read about it in my school's weekly reader, Curtis Shelby said. Yes, I don't remember exactly what it was, uh, but I... There was a magazine or something that I got with, with my school's weekly reader, and that's where I first saw about this and started to get hyped on it. Okay. So it was also the time where, uh, uh, what's his name, um, Leonard Nimoy was hosting some show on Nickelodeon, behind the scenes on different movies and stuff like that, and they were talking about Dune. So I was pretty hyped for something that probably was not really best, you know, geared towards my age bracket, but I still loved it. That's the first time I've thought of Weekly Reader in like 35 years. Right? Right, right? That's like, oh my gosh, that brings you back to my childhood. Right. Uh, Shayton's Hammer says, uh, I routinely rented the Lynch movie as a kid, so much so my aunt bought me all the published Dune books for my birthday. Oh, great great gift. That is wonderful. Now this is of course uh, from the original and it's a real quick get you caught up on who the players are, the planets, the politics in a, in a tiny little nutshell. Well, they have to do this so you know what's going on. Exactly. And, uh, Tom, did you see the, um, the Sci-Fi Channel's, uh, whatever it was, the miniseries or whatever. Oh, yeah. A little bit lower budget, but they they did a... a great a, job of getting as much as they can in there. Right. With the changes, but I really enjoyed uh, Children of Dune. Yeah, that, that's one example, though, where changing who they had playing certain roles kind of throws you off, you know? Especially when it's in such a short span of time. I mean filming time, release of, of Children of Dune. Love the costumes in here. Now, full disclosure, I have not seen Dune Part 2. So I have not had the opportunity to see how Christopher Walken treats this role. Can't comment on that at all. He's all right in it, but uh, they don't let him, you know. Be Christopher Walken? No. No. <laughs> and uh, they kind of miss the point of him supposedly being like an extremely old man, but he's kept very young and very all by the spice, by the spice and stuff like yeah. that. 
He seems kind of run down and beaten down and weak. That is a okay. Uh, the Golden Lion Throne and Hagal uh, Quartz Throne included in this movie. Nice, uh, nice details. Absolutely. Okay, let me back off a little bit on my mic. I knew I might have been coming in hotter than I intended. So let me. I just recently had to uh, sign out of. Streamyard and back in and it lost all of my settings. Let me know if that's a little bit better six. Thanks Another thing this movie does is You get that that translation thing where they're talking into Something you're hearing the gibberish that they're saying and it gets translated on the other side um, and, uh, the Star Trek never does that. You know, everyone just speaks English, you know, I like yeah. the idea they thought it through. I've always said this is a great interpretation of the Guild Steersman, but <laughs> very much with some David Lynch aesthetics to it. <laughs> Hey, Jedi Bill. Uh, anyone who's ever seen Eraserhead knows what I'm talking about. Oh, I can just picture him on the set with this shit. They're like, we don't quite understand what you're trying to do here. And he's just like, you don't need to understand. I just want them to look like two testicles sideways. That's <laughs> 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 vagina. You know what? I could totally see that. You're absolutely right. Okay, that it's almost that looks difficult. like a malta fish. It does. It does kind of. It makes a fish. What was the, this race again? The, the They're the guild steersmen. Guild. Okay. They've been. They're. They were humans, but they're mutated by literally being uh, constantly surrounded by the, the melange. That's another thing that Frank Herbert put some thought into. All of these, in quotes, aliens are humans, but these are thousands of years in the future, plus, you know, uh, everyone's been altered by exposure to spice so you end up with these different races but they're still you know they still trace their origins back to earth now again i will say i don't have the the level of knowledge that like nerd cookies or quinn's ideas has uh they they know the lore infinitely better but i do know enough to know the differences between the books and the various movie interpretations and i can't help but feel now that i've seen you know part one of 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 denny villeneuve's uh dune Obviously, he's 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 drawing from the books, but I feel like he was also influenced a little bit by David Lynch. He's done some things that only appear in the the Lynch version. Some of what he does with the Harkonnens, some of the stuff I think he's setting up the um, the uh, Bene Talaxu, um before they're even shown. That Giger aesthetic. I did say this. I'm not the, I'm not the one I'm thing not, you're yeah. looking for. <laughs> He's ugly. Comes off like like a, a, a mafia boss. I was not here. You, know? <laughs> you didn't hear this from me. You didn't hear it from me. The sweeping thing kind of confuses. What is he sweeping up? They're still leaving all that water behind. 
or whatever it is. It looks like sludge. Is yeah. that why they're all wearing little raincoats? Possibly. <laughs> That's a, another element that obviously is important in the books, and I think the movies are just kind of tapping the surface of. The, the, this whole idea that these different factions have the abilities to effectively see the future, or possible futures. And when you have individuals who can see the future, that's going to definitely impact politics and everything. Oh, see, we never had uh, a, a diverse casts before. Oh, I know what's wrong with that guy's nose. Look like he had a metal. Yeah, probably you know. From snorting too much. No, <laughs> I was gonna say from some battle or something. <laughs> You know, if those are appliances to hide their hair, they did a really good job. I had, I mean, I figure most of them have got to be, you know, shaved. I mean, because, you know, that's really, really good. Right? I mean, I've shaved my head before. It's like, and even when we've done Klingon stuff, it's like, yeah, it's hard to hide seams. Yeah, Shayton's hammer, goo. We just watched uh, on on uh, Monday. We watched uh, Ghostbusters too. Why am I dripping in the goo? <laughs> hey, it's Agent Cooper. Oh, so sorry, this is a, another element that that people have mixed feelings about. Some people are like, "Oh, what's with all the whispering?" How else do you portray that inner monologue that you only get in books? And that inner monologue is incredibly important in these stories. If the worms only attack when there's a rhythmic vibration, you would think they would find a way to make the vibrations so they weren't rhythmic. They'd be like interrupted and then... They, you, they talk about that. So the, the Fremen are able to get around by the way they walk. They break up their, their gait so that they don't have any, any rhythmic walking and it does confuse the, the, the worms and doesn't attract them. Um, but when you have machinery digging, you necessarily have to have a kind of rhythm that's going mm -hmm. to bring them. <laughs> Captain Jean-Luc Picard. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, maybe somebody should have like wiped his mouth. He's got some chocolate on yeah, it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a stain. Patrick Stewart's mullet. Yeah. This was a weird time for CG. Yeah. Yeah, those are weird kind of shields. Um, from my understanding, there is a, a good deal of, um, you know, the that 80s computer graphics, but a lot of handwork had to go into it. Yeah, this is a very early form of computer graphics animation, like 
very primitive. It makes me think of that money for nothing video. <laughs> it's kind of yeah, kind of in that vein. Um, Tron would have been like two years before this. Yeah. And honestly, I that that's another area where I think uh, the new one has done a great job. The way they treated the 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 shields was was sharp. I liked it. They're worms. <laughs> See, this is another thing. I really like the fact that, okay, yes, uh, uh, Kyle MacLachlan is way too old for the role, but he does portray that uh, that childlike excitement, right. you know, about the move and the worms and all that. <coughs> Dang. And uh, you you were asking about the, the the worms and the and the vibrations and stuff. Mm -hmm. Despite what Neil deGrasse Tyson says, it's absolutely reasonable because it really does happen in nature. Just on a much smaller scale. Yeah, um, Bryant. Uh, Tom was talking about that earlier on. Um, it would be great if he did, but I, I'd be surprised if he actually gets around to it. I mean, I, I I I have no insight specifically, but I I get the feeling he's kind of stepped away from it. You know, I don't know. What do you think, Tom? Do you think? Well, as he, I said before, he wouldn't even talk about it. Yeah, but in the last few years, he's kind of come around to talking about it a little more. So. I would never say never, and I think he even mentioned in a more recent interview something about considering revisiting it now that the new one was out, but yeah. And then what Bryant said, too, was I think the Spice Diver cut is better than Denny Villeneuve's version. Again, I haven't seen part two, so I can't speak to that, but you're not the first person that I've heard say that about this. Oh, and I also have to say that the, uh, the, 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 the guy that they had playing Fufi or Howitt in uh, the new ones, um, I really, really like him. I thought he was a great casting. And from what I've heard, his scenes were cut in the second movie. So that really annoys me. Yeah, Curtis, it does kind of have a steampunk aesthetic to it, doesn't it? So the uh, the sound modules, um, not in the books, entirely created for this uh, version of the movie. It was, correct me if I'm wrong, Tom, this was a mandate from the studio to get something like a lightsaber in there that could be marketed. If so, it I makes would perfect sense. So, um, yeah. But yeah, like... In fact, as far as I know, Herbert kind of enjoyed it. He thought it was kind of cool. But yeah. the other reason was the weirding way was more or less just fancy kung fu and exactly. And drum. Well, especially when they talk about like the Bene Gesserit, you know, I mean, yeah, it comes off as mind control, but in a non mystical way. In fact, that's probably a shortcoming of something they say here when when the the emperor says something about using telepathy or something it's not really telepathy it's normal psychology to the point where you know you manipulate someone so perfectly because you you understand you know uh human uh 
uh, mental processes so well and so forth. Um, and by the same token, being able to pull all the illusions and stuff to, you know, distract people and, and, and whatnot. He would have made a good Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> And Duncan, McLeod of the Clan McLeod. Yeah, right, Curtis <laughs> Shelby. Right, exactly. There can't be only one. Do they mention how long it takes to get there from? Uh, no, but it's, it, it is implied that getting everything up to the, 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 the uh, space liner uh, and then back down to Arrakis is takes longer than the actual jump because it's like an instantaneous hyper jump type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, Chris and Brian are talking about the uh, Jadorowski's Dune. Um, I got to admit, I haven't even looked in. I've heard a lot about that. Haven't haven't looked at it yet. Try not to get a swelled head, kid. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's absolutely on my, my to watch list. Yeah, so they're leaving a water planet to go to a desert planet. Yes. It, and I, I think that uh, especially this version <laughs> does a great job of communicating just, you know, what what that's like. I mean, being used to seeing so much water, literally living on uh, a coastal uh, landmass with, uh, with the tides and everything. Holtzman engine does the actual space folding, uh, though the movie implies that the navigators fold space. Yeah, because I don't think they... I was never clear from the readings of the books how the navigators do their navigating. What part of that is their element? I get the, the theory behind, you know, being able to see the future, knowing, you know, what routes are safe and what aren't, but how do you then you know, choose that path and communicate it to the ship. I don't think they ever get that across. Getting into my second drink. And then these, uh, these floating globes of light described in the book... Um, I'm glad that I saw that uh, in the Villeneuve version they did something like that. Ah, uh, never see the pupper on 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 camera. That is so awesome. Thank you. She missed me. I was going to today. Well, what's awesome is she's just you know, just there and being quiet and just wants to be with you as opposed to just barking and trying to get your attention. <laughs> well, this is her favorites. She loves to get pets. Don't you? You said you cute puppers. Purebred Shepherd? No, she's actually a Husky Shepherd mix. Okay, now I'm going to... Oh, okay. The, the, uh, solo layout so I can see the puppers. Better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, you thought we had a big uh, DVD collection. <laughs> wow, yeah. How far off off the, the camera does, does your collection go? All the way to this wall here. Oh my gosh. I think you see almost all yeah. of this one because there's another shelf over there. Okay. Then there's one, two... Three, 
shelves that are about yay big. Okay. There. Then I have a whole other big one like this one full of CDs. And my records are right here off to the left and you can't see. But and then I got a whole bunch of movies that aren't on a shelf yet because I got a whole shelf that needs to be put together. And those wow. are off in a box, in boxes behind the couch. All right, so Nettie, yeah, he I'm definitely not. does have us beat. <laughs> yeah. And here we thought we were something with uh, our uh, over a thousand movies. Yeah. Sadie's like right off a of camera playing with her toy, showing Good. off. Good for her. She thinks you can see her. <laughs> well, that's okay. <laughs> we know she's there. That's what's important. She's like, I'm going to beat this turtle up. <laughs> I got her one of those tough toy turtles and I got her a gator. So she's got her turtle and her gator. Okay, so the navigators mentally send an image to the ship's computers to literally fold space. It yeah, would be fold space is what they easier do, yeah. to explain if it was it, that was on the panel. Yeah. Sadie thinks she's going to like jelly beans, but I don't think she will. You think you will. I know. You're all excited. You think you're going to get a treat, but I'm trying to warn you, like you now. You're not going to like gonna it. You're not going to enjoy it as much as you think <laughs> you are. You think you are. Look at her tail. She thinks she's getting a big old treat. Look at her. Are you going to sit like a good girl? Because you're still not going to like it. Well, she's she obedient, sad. man. I'll tell you. She That's did she sit. She's like, open. I'm ready for a treat. <laughs> I get these damn things open with my carpal tunnel. Here, here, bite this open for me, Sadie. <laughs> Try and cut myself with a knife while I'm at it. All right, let's see what we got here, Sadie. We want to try a green one. You're not going to like it. She ate it. Did she? Wow. Okay. Yeah, well, she, she, now see if she comes back for more. She's chewing on it. She might go spit it out. Yeah, that's what I'm expecting. She's going to spit it out. She's like, I'm eating it. <laughs> yeah, I can picture that. Yeah, exactly. Oh, she spit it out. She yeah. spit it out. She's not going to eat it. It's like a pickle. <laughs> oh, That's funny. I, if I had carrots, I would six. You know what she really likes is frozen peas. Oh, wow. Interesting. Interesting. You mentioned pickles. We we had a cat that used to like pickles. Oh, mischief like green think olives. She will eat a eat a burger and she'll spit the pickles out. <laughs> yeah, my cat used to eat green olives and spit out the pimentos. Yeah, these these. And you're like walking food? through the house and all of a sudden, you're like, what the fuck? Because oh. <laughs> she spat it out somewhere and you didn't know she did. Yeah. <laughs> Six says pickles are revolting. Well, it depends on if they're sweet pickles or sour pickles. Like, I like kosher dills, which are the sour, crunchy ones. Troy likes, well, either. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I have yet to fight a pickle I won't eat. I don't like sweet pickles. Yeah, I can't do sweeter butter. No. Well, my stunts back from when I was a kid, my sisters tricked me into thinking I was eating a, uh, you know, a regular oh, dill pickle. Yeah gave me the what they call the bread and butter pickles which are sweet and i just thought they were so nasty yep. it's like i was always wary of eating pickles after that for the longest time i wouldn't touch them because it's like i didn't know which was which right i only had a couple jelly beans don't yell at me six <laughs> i like free. pickle prequels cucumbers <laughs> 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 That's funny. She's not wrong. No, she's absolutely <laughs> right. Well, the funny thing, too, is I, I think a lot of people have, have, because we've just gotten so used to pickles, are pickled cucumbers. But you can really pickle anything, you know? Geek Flag with Nate said, uh, Netter Troy, have you ever try had pickled moonshine? I've never had moonshine, period. I have. Uh, you haven't? 
No. Well, we'll pick some up next time we go to Benny's because there's some really good flavors. No, I have not uh, tried it, Nate. Someone uh, had me taste their uh, moonshine apple pie. Oh, that was good. Now, she's just putting this these images into his head, isn't she? Um, no. I, I, well, no. The test is that the pain is being caused by the box. He's imagining, this is a visual representation of what he's feeling. All she's doing is kind of goading him, and if he takes his hand out of the box, she'll Stab poke him, him the with neck. the gum jabar and he dies. And the way they film it also implies that somehow she was mentally causing the pain, but that's that's just, you know, this movie's interpretation. See, I think she's just planting all the stuff in his head. What do you call it? Uh, like hypnosis? Mm -hmm. That's the way I always took the weirding voice as kind of like a more of a suggestive yeah. type thing. And I mean that that's like real world stuff. I mean, you know, people, you know, that that uh know how they can convince you that you hear things, see things. Convince you that your memories are different than, than they actually are. You'd think they'd have some sort of a test to find out if he is the quiz that's had it. Oh, Why don't Layla you go there Rose. and get Hi, it for us? Hi, Rose. <laughs> Hi, Rose. And PJ. PJ did make it back. Welcome, yep. PJ. See, this is the other element, right? You have the, the B'nai Gesserit, all women, right? Trying to find the Kwisatz Haderach that's going to be the, the male like equivalent or whatever there is so much subtext here you don't need to mess around with it to tell any you know messaging you want to it's already here See, again, Kyle MacLachlan playing the age that's appropriate for the character. Um, a bit impetuous, a bit impulsive. He just demonstrated he was able to, to overcome the Gam Jabbar with, uh, you know, the, the, the litany against fear. And yet, he still, you know, can't accept what they're basically saying, you know, history's all, future history's already set. There's only so much we can do. I mean, he was 25 here, but he looks like a very old 25, I guess. True, I don't know. true, true. I, 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 it never bothered me much, but... Yeah, and, and, and the character in the books is supposed to be like a teenager. Let's face it, this, uh, this little skinny guy who's playing him now could play anything from, you know, uh, pre-teen up through, you know, uh, 
if he pushed himself early 30s. Honestly, I used to give Timothy a lot of crap, but after seeing Wonka in the Dune films now, even though I didn't care as much for the second film, I, I, he can wear a dress anytime he wants. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I, I haven't seen Wonka, although it is on my list. I told you I, I hadn't seen the second one yet. So honestly, since my only experience with him is that first uh, Dune, I haven't had a chance to see his range. He's okay in that. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, Wonka, it was like, dude, if they would have just made his hair blonde, he looks and sounds and acts just like a young Gene Wilder almost. I've seen enough scenes of that to get that, even though they imply that it's supposed to be its own thing or it's supposed Kinda, to be... Kind of, sort of. I would say not really. I mean, it lines more up with the It original really Wonka. does line up more with the Gene Wilder, yeah. Because they even use uh, some of the music from the original film, too. So this uh, little Okay, so list. this is actually kind of cool. I have a story for this, because I talked to Brad Dorff. Did you? Um, and we were actually at a watch party for... Uh, are you guys aware of the uh, In Search of Darkness and In Search of Tomorrow documentaries? Uh, which was the horror films and whatnot? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we were doing a Dune watch party, and uh, he was the guest. Okay. We got to talk to him for about a half hour. And uh, he came up with that whole little, uh, by my mind, I, I drink. Yeah, the, uh, the litany of... of, of yeah, the, he did that as a as an answer to uh, Paul's little, you know, the little death thing. Right. Or I fear death. Uh, so he came up with that alone. And then the other fun story he told us about the movie was, he thought, of, he, well, he told us a couple of cool stories. One was, another one was uh, him and the rest of the crew were some of the first people to hear... Uh, the police album with every breath you take and stuff on it because mm-hmm. Sting brought it to the set. Oh wow, that's cool. Yeah, so he, he got they all got to hear that kind of stuff. But uh, the other bit that was really funny he told us about was for the part with the tooth. David was convinced that the only way that the gas would look right is if Jurgen Prock now allowed them to puncture a hole into his cheek and feed a tube through it. Oh my gosh. And Jurgen was going to do it. And the producers and everybody on there are trying to convince David not to do this. Yeah. And and Brad's like, I'm just sitting back going, I wouldn't fucking do it. <laughs> right? <laughs> but yeah, so like Jurgen was all ready to go, like and David's like, it's the only way it'll work, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Oh, Needless Jack to say, Nance. no, they did not puncture a hole in yeah, your yeah. Yeah. cheek. Spaceman Spiff. <laughs> and See, I always love these two, honestly. This is another element. So you, you get the red hair, you know, of the Harkonnens, um, which you don't get in the, the, the current one because they all shave their heads. Actually, I think it's implied that all their hair is falling out. Oh, because okay. They, are, they have stripped their their planet of all its resources. They literally bathe in like chemicals. Yeah. And their sun is like infrared and all this shit. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it's a it's an interesting take on them, but of all three versions, this is my favorite. Yeah. The, Although what's his face in the TV version does give a great performance. Oh yeah, absolutely. Take on him. The um, the thing that gets me is uh, this this is of course uh, true to the books because the whole red hair thing, you know, the genetic lineage. It's a little bit important. Uh, spoiler for those of you that haven't read the books, um, because uh, Jessica is. I want to say his daughter. Yes. Um, and uh, that's all part of the, uh, the the breeding program and whatnot. Actually, his mother is, or her mother is that one witch that did the test. And she was dolphin loved by him, I thought. Gotcha. That could be, yeah. Because he's actually extremely, yeah, more or less homosexual. So it's more or less a punishment. That was my memory, but I could be wrong. 
But, you know, the irony is that even though he was, you know, what he did, that's his undoing in the end, right? Absolutely. So all this body horror of the, the Harkonnens here. Uh, that's all Lynch. That's all that's, Lynch. It is all Lynch, but it is an interesting interpretation that that Denny Villeneuve just does in a different way. You know, this this what you were just describing about the the infrared sun and the chemicals and all that you know it's a different way of of yeah but they drop all the homosexual elements of the baron um (laughs) which is unfortunate for a number of reasons one if you want to get your woke stuff in there it's already there just you know depict it they can't do that because he's the villain Right. Well, yeah, there's that That's too. But it also becomes important when you get to, um, and who knows if they're going to get to it at all. But when uh, Alia, you know, um, you know, this could be a spoiler too if they ever get around to doing uh, Messiah. But uh, Alia uh, becomes like possessed by uh, uh, Baron Harkonnen. So. She expresses those uh, gender fluidities too. Actually, she kind of turns into a whore. She turns into a what's that again? Well, she kind of turns into well, not so much a whore, but she like just oh yeah, she's fucking that one guy like. But she has that other dude too, like yeah. So she's screwing around. Now. But kind of like him, you know, just screwing everything. That yes, guy. letting like, her yeah. libido get the best of her. It's like, there's right. a cream for that face. <laughs> Isn't that the same actor that played uh, Jonathan Kent in, um, oh, what was it? Was it in Lois and Clark? Who are you thinking of? Let me let me look real quick. I, the, the the actor that played the, the Baron here, isn't he the same, same one? Who he, hmm, I know him from somewhere else. No, but he's been in plenty of stuff, yeah. He's been in, like, Cat's Eyes, Three Fugitives, Armed and Dangerous. Um, let's see here. Oh, Heartbeat. okay. Yeah. Okay. He, Protocol. He, he looks similar Amadeus. to the actress. Amadeus, Amadeus is the one that I probably remember most from. I mean, I'll tell you, the, the makeup they've got on him changes him so much well, when you see him herpes. in these other roles yeah space herpes and his space aids yeah because the gay community really came down on this movie yeah because that's exactly what you know it was implied that that was some sort of a it's you know, space aids yeah I never noticed this before, but Curtis was right. There definitely is a steampunk kind of vibe to this. And now that I'm looking at it, it kind of reminds me of like 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea or whatever. You think they still have pugs 10,000 years in the future? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> I know, you're not. You don't like. I dogs. don't like yip yip dogs. I know. I like real dogs. Like Tom's got a real dog. Tom does it, I guess. I'll tell you what. This scene here does a great job of communicating how huge these uh, these vehicles are.
the yeah, puns right. were funny. Because my understanding is her memory, they're not in the book. So it's the right. pure Lynch thing. Oh, absolutely it is. And he's probably like, I want pugs. Pugs everywhere. They look just like E.T. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> People well, I never think they're that alien they dogs. They do kind of look like E.T. I never thought of that before. <laughs> There's a testicle turd. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you've ever seen uh, Eraserhead or even some elements of the Elephant Man, you definitely see that aesthetic over and over oh, yeah. again. Well, it added to the otherworldly thing. And that's, you know, I mean, sure, Dino wanted a Star Wars. Uh -huh. He should have known better with getting Lynch involved. I mean, Lynch is going to give you... I don't know. Wasn't Lynch going to direct what? Return of the Jedi? He was, and he's like, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, probably for the best. Um, uh, Deleted Scenes uh, has been hosting for a while now on Tuesdays a uh, rewatch of, of uh, Twin Peaks, and uh, Netter and myself and Agent Boomer uh, been on his panel. And uh, I, I said, I think, after we get through uh, Season 2, well, actually, after we get through Season 3 of, of Twin Peaks, I said it might be worthwhile to check out some of uh, David Lynch's other works because a lot of those elements influence, you know, everything else. You kind of need to understand, you know, the aesthetic of David Lynch to get all of it, you know. Yeah, according to this quote, he had next to zero interest in doing it. Return of the Jedi. Tom, is that a a, a quote from uh, from from Lynch that you shared with me? Yeah, from two thousand and ten. Yeah. I was asked by George to come up to see him about directing what would be the third Star Wars, and I had. Next door to zero interest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to do nothing with no Ewoks in it. <laughs> but if Not they were bald and had giant heads. <laughs> if they walked backwards and chewed gum, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Can they P talk backwards? <laughs> uh, Nate says, Pugs! They remind me of a small Mexican chihuahua. <laughs> yeah, he has said that. Like E.T., but a Mexican chihuahua. Uh, we know that Dog is from Men in Black. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly the same pug, right? You know, he's, he's the most famous pug in Hollywood. No, it's funny, though, because I don't remember Pugs being a big deal until, like, I think it was, like, Milo and Otis and a couple other movies. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pug. They they kind of look like miniature bulldogs. They they have the That's same... That's why I like them. They have, yeah, very similar, only they're not as big and slobbery. But they do yeah, have a lot true. of uh, issues with breathing and stuff, I guess. I was just going to say, breathing. just like bulldogs, the, the, the smashed face kind of impedes their... their, their 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 nasal freedom. Yeah, yeah they, they generally have some type of issue. Mm -hmm. The the pugs were in Men in Black, so we know they're aliens. Right, exactly. That's See? it. I fucking told you. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only person we're missing is a Men in Black of David Lynch. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly right. You had Michael Jackson and all those other guys on that one board that one time, but yeah, one of my like, rewatchers is going to be Tank Girl. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, Tank Girl's a good one. You've been wasting water. <laughs> this is my favorite version of this character too. I don't think they ever quite got him right again. Yeah. I, I love that line. We're finding the sabotage devices too easily. And, yep. you know, he's he's 
he's keyed in, right? It's like they they put a bunch of stuff that we're gonna find, which means there's a bunch of other stuff we're not finding. And Bosco scenario, welcome, welcome. You know how this works. If you want to see the the movie where we're at, the link is up at the top. We're uh, we're on book two. <coughs> Which I always thought was kind of weird that they, they, you know, call the chapters books because we're still in the first book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like her outfit. Yeah, me too. Well, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but the reasoning behind that is kind of what leads up to the whole kind of joke of sorts in the in the stories when you kind of find out that the person who's telling you these stories or who's uh, what do you call it records Prin they are Princess Irulan are, yeah are Princess Irulan and, and the only reason is that she had all this time to write all this crap is because she was in a loveless marriage yes with and it had nothing better to do than be a babysitter and an author yep Which kind of goes along with why I'm not a big fan of the, the Villeneuve doing, because it kind of misses a big point near the end. Everybody is 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 kind of focusing on that. Quinn has talked about it, uh, Nerd Cookies. Yeah, I don't want to spoil it too much, but yeah. That's why I'm uh, just... That's why I didn't rush out to see it. And I, now I may not even see it until it comes out. It's on worth it. seeing it in the big screen. Like, I don't want to yeah. deplore people that much, but it just, especially if you're a big fan of Dune, you got to be prepared for it. Yeah. She's so tiny. Yeah, that actress that played the shutout mapes um, just. Yeah, she wasn't in enough for me. I would have loved to have seen her in a bunch of other things. The other thing, too, is with Dr. Yui, uh, they they kind of have to give away that he's the, the Confederate, yeah. you know, early on. And that's one of the shortcomings of the medium, because in the books, you really don't know until the betrayal happens. You get all the groundwork for it, but you get groundwork for everybody, and you have reason to suspect everybody. Yeah, uh, uh, trying to think of her name. It's uh, Linda Hunt, I believe. She actually won an Oscar for playing a man. Really? Yeah, I'm trying to remember the name of the movie. It was that one uh, biopic. <laughs> That's when they were like talking about like actors can only play certain things. And da -da 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 -da. I'm like, well, does that mean that Linda Hunt has to give back her Oscar? Yeah, exactly. Tom, take a quick look at the uh, the private chat.
See, now this looks like a, a rough a rough cut that they just showed. But That's I what I was saying. Like, I think it's, to, uh, that's why I think that he got a hold of some uh, work print. Because the stuff that looks rougher is clearly not even from, that's not even from the TV version. Yeah. What is that weapon supposed to be made out of? It is the tooth of one of the sand yeah. worms. And the big deal about it here is, uh, yeah. It's like, go ahead, stab me. Now she just made a comment. She goes, "You unsheath that weapon, unblooded." So she knew it hadn't been used. Yes, you have to use it, and they actually make sure they they cover that in the new film. Yeah. Yeah. See, and I always took that as you know, just like. Uh, you know, with uh, with gun safety, you never you never draw a weapon you're not prepared to to, to fire. You never draw a blade uh, unless you're planning to draw blood with it. eyebrows <laughs> yeah they you know and you can you can say it's a little bit of, of David Lynch weirdness but uh, but uh, he was going out of his way to not only demonstrate the different uh, let's call them races you know like I said but also the different factions you know um, and making it clear. And it also makes me wonder the a lot of what we're seeing here with the sets and whatnot. How much of this is like an actual location? How much of it was made up for the movie? Because some of it's really, really cool. Like shot it in Italy, and they shot at the same time and in the same place as they were shooting Conan the Destroyer at the same time. Okay, that makes sense. Because Conan the Destroyer almost got both productions shut down because Schwarzenegger and a bunch of those guys got drunk. And I guess they mooned a bunch of cops or something like that. <laughs> so, like, yeah, they were going to shut both productions down on Dino. He's a little drug addict. So this scene here where he was just looking at the history and so forth, looks like it was another way of introducing a little bit more of that background information. But I also think this would have come earlier on when he was, uh, you know, first doing his research in that scene. Oh, hey, Darth Plato. I'm sorry, I haven't been watching the, the chat the way I normally do.
Um, so this, you know, inter interpretation of something directly out of the book, um, and it's become very iconic. Um, Paramount actually straight up stole this in their um, Klingon PC game. Uh, made it a Romulan assassination device. Oh yeah, you can see a lot of direct influences on a lot of modern sci-fi from Doom. Yeah, yeah. The way she says, I'm the housekeeper. Yeah. It sounds so sinister. Yeah. Well, and that's a very in interesting interpretation because when you first see her, you don't know what to make of her. And you don't realize that she really, really is there to help them. She's literally ready to give her life for uh, Lady Jessica. And she even just said, there's a traitor in your midst. Yep. Of course, they all kind of already expe uh, suspected that. It's like, gee, what gave him away? Right. <laughs> The Atreides have really, really cool uniforms. I um, straight up stole them in a uh, role-playing game I was uh, doing years ago that was tangentially related to uh, Battletech. See, that's a great line. You know, you know, I, I understand why you're beating yourself up, but look at your victories too. Yeah. But did you clear yourself? <laughs> well, that's yeah, as you read the books, uh you start to question Thufir and you start to question Jessica too. And they are suspecting each other. Is that a film projector? <laughs> Jesse says that the tan uniforms uh, resemble uh, Russian army uniforms oh. from the First World War. Yeah. Yeah, there is... And, and the, the darker uniforms that they have earlier on with the gold epaulets, uh, very... I, I want to say Prussian. But yeah, all, all very World War I era feel to them. I just noticed his eyebrows are as fuzzy as his head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the 
attempt failed because your son was quick-witted. Well, one of the things they bring up in the book is, uh, or, or that, that Duke Leto says, is I, if I'm going to just stay in, in the, the, the castle and, and hide away, they win. Yeah. I cannot do what I need to do as a leader if I don't get out there. Yeah, come on, Picard. You right, can, this concept this. of, of <laughs> sand power. Now go do it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I can see Napoleonic. I can see that too, Nate. Sure. <laughs> yep, you're a wild ass. <laughs> Okay, those are cool outfits too. You mean the uh, the still suits they're wearing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, the still suits. That's another thing that I feel like once they were depicted this way by Lynch, it directly influenced everything that came after it. Because this isn't exactly the way it's described in the books, and and I think that everyone now thinks of these as, you know what they think of. Okay, are Kyle McLaughlin's eyes blue or brown? Because earlier they were brown, now they're blue. Well, they're definitely going to get more blue as the yes, movie goes. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're blue like my blue. Yes. No, I don't think Kyle McLaughlin has blue eyes. Oh, he's been it's taking like the spikes. Ago, yeah, his eyes were blue. But earlier, when he was on the um, the balcony with his dad in the rain, he had brown eyes. It's like, you've done this already. No, he's, uh, he's intuitive. That's the prophecy. Yeah. Western Allies uniforms. Okay. Shocker. Okay. Right. I never did care for the ornithopters in uh, in this particular version. I think the the current version. <laughs> gets it much much better um i don't know what the thought was with these you can't even call it an ornithopter it, it in no way resembles a, a bird in flight no no it doesn't I 
That's a lot of sand. Oh, I have no doubt David Lynch had a lot of unrealized projects. Nate, I wouldn't be surprised if when they did the 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 Borg, some of them were actually using leftover still suits or something, because props always get reused. See, now his eyes brown again. So I don't know if they had him wearing contacts or something, and his eyes were blue, and now he's not wearing them. Well... You know, like Tom was saying earlier, some of these scenes are inconsistent because they they didn't have the after effects. Oh, yeah. But I thought Spice Diver fixed them all, so if this is the second version, he has done like a third or fourth version. So no, this is the third, actually. Okay. But there's also an element of you can mistake a person's eye color based on the lighting, so I, I wouldn't read too much into that see like his eyes are absolutely blue no doubt about that So those ruts are the worm sign, I'm guessing. No. Uh, as they were going over those uh, dunes, uh, you could see, like, electrical discharge from, oh, from, okay. from static of them moving underneath the sand. Um, they're warning them that the worm is coming, but they will literally continue mining the spice until the very last minute that he was just saying that. Yeah. And there's David Lynch. It's a lynch sighting. He was so young. Yes. Girl. They all were. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, this is one of those scenes that you have to get into the story because it establishes how he values people over really anything, over the spice, power, anything. Because the real power is the, the loyalty of your people. Now, as I recall, at this point in the story, he's most got a little woody. Yeah, <laughs> most people. Yeah, exactly. Most people, most of the characters don't even know the connection between the the uh, the worms and the spice. Uh, it's not until later, I think, that that um, Paul learns the life cycle of the worm and begins to understand what the spice actually is. Worm poop? Kinda. <laughs> Kinda. I mean, talk about dry mouth. Right. <laughs> and now that uh, that uh, spice mine will be uh, digested over a thousand years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
in Cosme Lady Lady V said, I've never seen this before. I almost want to listen to the audiobook first. You know, it doesn't matter really what you see first. Um, I, I've i gone into it whole hog. I've watched every version of the movies, read the book a number of times. I never actually thought to, to get an audio version of the book. I probably should. It says Baba Booey. Yeah, I think everybody who reads it, Nate, has a different interpretation of how the eyes should look. Yeah, my eyes look like his. Yeah. Mine are that blue. Yeah. Mine have never been been Fremen blue. No. <laughs> They're in vast numbers. Vast. Yeah. <laughs> That is an interesting looking instrument. The Balisette. Yeah, I heard a lot of disappointment from fans about uh, Gurney and the Balisette in uh, Dune Part 2. It's like, play Freebird. <laughs> If I leave here tonight, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Rosanna. Rosanna. <laughs> I test the rains doing in Africa. <laughs> Those were Toto jokes. Yes. I was following you. I figured the way you laughed. I, I think he was able to figure that out on his own without you interpreting. Right. <laughs> See, that's that that could be the downside of this this method of storytelling. That kind of over explains some things sometimes. But I kind of miss that in the new version and in the sci-fi version. I yeah. like that. I don't think this scene was in the original. And it was uh, depicted in uh, the Denny Villeneuve version. Another very important scene. I'm glad this is here. What? Oh, and full moon. Does that mean we're going to get werewolves? No, it's the source of his uh, name that he chooses later on. So this is interesting. Instead of getting just that one scene at the beginning of him studying, it's like he's continuing to do this throughout, you know, his time. And this is how they worked in the prologue yeah. from the TV version. And I think it's a brilliant idea. The downside, though, is this is all stuff you know he already knows. It's like, uh, it, in, in world, it would be like a children's book, you know? Not really covering anything he didn't already know very well. Yeah, Heat Sinker's pointing out prefers the, the Toto score. I, I like the Toto score, too.
Why are you kissing your ring, dude? Because it represents his legacy to his son. See, and that's the thing. That's one blind spot that he's got. He lets his emotions, uh, you know, cloud his objectivity. Well, I thought that it was like uh, a shadow on the moon. You know, the, you know... Like a shadow of of the uh, of the desert mouse that they could see, like in the in the patterns on the moon. See, like all of that. Uh, all that tile work and everything, I, I kind of feel like that's got to be like a real place. Or it's just painted to look like tile. It really is cool though. He's trying to warn him. Yeah. So marry her now. <laughs> well, it's literally too late now. Oh, Dash Boot? Okay. It's been a long time since I've seen that. I don't know if I ever have. Yeah, he would play Captain German U-boat. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have to watch that again, Jesse. Ew. I know. <laughs> it's like I hope he washed his hands before sticking them in his mouth. The tooth will set you free. I was just thinking that, yeah. <laughs> I think you're right, the tail work is actual tiles. I thought they might have been painted on, but they appear to yeah. be actual tiles. 
And the dog's like, I'm outie. Right. <laughs> now that's another element I think that, well, you know, if they did mention it, we were probably talking over it. So they have like laser guns or whatever, but they can't use them because the dry static air uh, causes them to malfunction. That's why they created, that's the story behind why they create these weirding modules. But as uh, Tom pointed out earlier in the books, it's just they fight with knives and kung fu instead of, you know, you know, laser guns. Also, my understanding is that the laser guns, the reason they don't use them in the movie or in the book is because uh, they would basically cause like a nuclear reaction if one hit one of if, the... If one hits the shields. Yeah, exactly. Shields, yeah. You have like a full-on nuclear... And they actually end up at, at one point using that because, you know, they want to cause a nuclear explosion. What's the reason he has that skin condition? Uh, it's uh, Tom was actually literally right when he called it space herpes. It's it's implied that it's like a venereal disease. Mm, okay. <laughs> Let me just yank on your ear. Yeah. Yeah, he really does get across the whole idea of, of, of being a complete sadist. Right, and that shield technology, you know, yeah, they brought down the shield around the city. There's always the possibility that an individual is wearing a shield. What he just shove in his mouth? The Duke's patch. Yeah. See, and this is the, the typical, you know, uh, villain thing, right? Leave him in your hands, and then, yeah, I'm not going to kill him right away because, you know, I'm, I'm hot for the chick or whatever. And it's like, you know what? I'm not leaving him in no one's hands. I'm killing him right now. Just dead. Done. You. Yep. You're disgusting. He is. Well, the reason he does this is because he doesn't want the blood on their hands, so he's leaving off the... Well, yeah, that's true. Right. You're right. Basically. Yeah. Because it would cause some issues. But yeah, once we get rolling here into the desert parts, here's where the major changes in the film come in, or the more extra scenes with the Fremen and yeah. the difference in the ending and stuff like that, but yeah. I think Jack Nance was in every single production of that David Lynch ever did, at least as long as he was alive. But uh, with that, I suppose Sadie'd be wanting to go outside and stuff. So okay. I should probably 
head out here, but it's been I, fun. And, I, uh, I super, super appreciate it, Tom. Um, I, I knew that you, you had a, a pretty uh, a thick schedule, so uh, I appreciate any time you were able to uh, to give us. Uh, we're going to watch this out to the end, but... Uh, yeah, it's got another hour left. Any yeah. anything anything you want to share with the audience that you got coming up that you want uh, yeah. you want to let them know about? Uh, just the morning show tomorrow and stuff like that. But you know, enjoy okay, the everybody, the be there. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, you're getting to the good stuff anywhere. It's all mostly a lot more new stuff that we haven't seen before. If you've never seen it before. Yep. Yep. Looking forward to it, Tom. I thank you so much. I'll shoot you a note offline, uh, expressing my appreciation. You're you're no good worries, people, brother. man. Take care, guys, and hopefully have a great night. You too, Thanks man. Thanks for being here, Tom. Bye-bye. Thanks. Good night. And actually, I'm sorry to do this to you, but I need to step away for just a second. That's fine. As long as gross guy doesn't spit anymore, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like, I think people who spit are disgusting. I'm sorry, but they are. Ugh. Time to be a hero. Those shields are just so funky. <laughs> well, I guess that shield didn't work so good. Sorry about that, but all this no talk of water and, you know, everything, I just needed to, you know. So this is, of course, the, the great tragedy. He... Yeah. He was... You know, holding out hope that his wife was still alive, and she's absolutely not. Because <laughs> isn't there another version of this where he takes her dead body out to show him that she's dead? That might have been uh, one of the other uh, films. That's what I just said. Wasn't there another version? Of oh, this well, see, because we're talking about different <laughs> versions of this Lynch thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I see what you're saying then. Yeah. That's what I was, yeah, Samuel, I, welcome, by the way. You're right, I did see that video where they used the footage from the new uh, uh, Villeneuve version and, 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 and put in the old uh, version of the, the shields. And for anyone that is in the chat who hasn't yet, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Thank you very much. Okay, why is she gagged? Because she has the voice. Oh, oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> wow, talk about bad haircuts. Right. All I gotta do is lower my voice and sound more guttural. Yeah.
Now, see, that's a great line because it implies the subtleness of the voice. I didn't know the blade was poisoned. Yeah, he's just extra super perceptive. Forget <laughs> my son's mind. Yeah. Yep, that's exactly how it goes. Oh, I don't know how she talks like that. That makes my ear tickle. Well, it's all it's all after effect, uh, you know, by the sound guy. Well, it was a good try. Uh, Samuel Proctor said he heard from his brother who saw the new one that they had a much shorter time gap in between movies so the sister is at least an infant in it. Yeah, I I haven't seen that second one yet but I've already heard a lot of people kind of struggling with how they're dealing with, with Alia in this new version. Now, this uh, vest or whatever that the Baron is wearing, I swear, if it was black, it would remind me completely of the outfits that the uh, Cenobites wear in Hellraiser. You're not going to get his ring. Yeah. Well, yeah. Remember the tooth. Remember the tooth. means he cares about his son. Well, and it, it also means he understands the ways of the Fremen. And considering that the Harkonnens had been there for so many years, he should have known what it means to give the water of your life. for you. Well, Jessica really should be getting into her still suit already. She does not have to wait until they crash. Oh, it was in the script. Yeah, I know. Okay. But he's right. Now, 
he has very little time because, yeah, it's very likely that a worm is on its way now. That's a direct line from the book. So they're getting on the rocks to make sure that they're away from the worm, correct? Yeah, the worm can't get at them if they're, you know, in in the rocks. If they're on open sand, they're they're in trouble. I do feel like they made Jessica in this one a little bit too emotional. She should really have better control over herself as a uh, Bene Gesserit. The one moon that is uh, Not being to the shown right now, looks yeah. like there's a handprint on it. Yep. And this one here has that impression of, of the, uh, the desert mouse. Not yet, but he will be, Samuel. That's kind of obscene. <laughs> yes, that's what Tom was saying. Yeah. It does come off as... Uh... Incredible uh, visuals. But this is, this is another uh, David Lynch, you know, trope. Uh, if you've ever seen... Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Elephant Man. There's a weird, trippy scene kind of like this at about the midpoint of the movie. This always reminded me of uh, any of you Brits that remember uh, the Tomorrow People. Oh. That's what yeah. this made me think of. tell you about them oh yeah no they just they just crashed the uh the ship they've escaped uh he's found his father's ring they yeah they haven't gotten to the water of life scene yet um but as i was saying at the top of the show this version the spice diver edition of dune is available out on youtube so you can find it uh, and watch it in your at your leisure. <coughs> I'm an anomaly. He just cried out to his father and said, that one day the sleeper will awaken. So that's where we're at, Samuel. So, I mean, technically that makes him do Paul Atreides, doesn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, wouldn't it? Wouldn't he be taking over the dumb since his dad died yep well the thing too is that you know in in the the, the span of the, the 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 story the other houses don't know that the atreides survived so that's true as far as they know the lineage is ended Yeah. So you tear open his still suit and he's he's going to dehydrate in in less than less than 2 days. It's 
It's like, you know how you watch a movie and you want people to die? I want some. I want him to oh, die. Oh, Beast Raban, yeah, he, he dies big time, yeah. <laughs> Not soon enough. <laughs> oh, he's nuts. He's beyond nuts. Ew. And what? Isn't that um, yes? Oh, okay. That's Jack Nance. Yeah. I mean, he was he was making those those faces yep, with the eyes and stuff. I'm like, Wait that's a Pete Martell. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I said I think he's in everything David Lynch did <laughs> for as long as he was alive. These people are disgusting. I will say this about Sting. He was he was built. He was that's like two percent body fat. So that they can make new ones. <laughs> and you know that sand is slippery to try and walk on. Uh huh. So another element here is seeing Paul kind of growing up, right? He's He's been doing all this, you know, my father's not going to die, tell me he's not going to die, blah, 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 to, okay, my father's dead, I'm aware of it, I got to take charge, got to deal with this cir circumstance. How do you not walk with a rhythm? Because they seem to be walking pretty steadily. Yeah, it's not an easy thing. You you walk, you know, one, two, then you do a break step, then you do one, two, three, another break step. Personally, I like the uh, the worms as they're depicted here more than in the new one. That's just my personal opinion. It's like, come on, we're almost there. And you see the sand collapsing as it yeah. goes underneath.
I just keep climbing. Can't she use her voice on it? I don't know. So what does the spice smell like? Cinnamon. <laughs> I'm kind of not kidding. That That is how it's described in the book. That's a lot of little needle teeth. So here, here's a different thumper. Yeah. So why didn't it go towards the one he planted? It wasn't very big. Mm -hmm. The script needed there to be tension. <laughs> <laughs> yourself together. <laughs> nope, you had help. Like you ain't touching me. Now, this is another little bit of a divergence because in reality, they don't need her to teach them fighting ways. Um, if anything, they learn a lot from the, from the Fremen. And that's got to be weird when you see, like, the girl in my dreams. It was an accident. <laughs> uh, in case you didn't notice, um, that's Big Ed.
Thanks for the heads up. Yeah. <laughs> Well, again, falling back on his training, right? And from his, uh, from from a narrative standpoint, we got the setup, right? We saw him doing the fight with, uh, with um, Gurney, uh -huh. and now this is the payoff. His his life really is on the line. And there's no shields. And yeah, if you fight with shields, that's going to be a very different kind of thing, right? Where you got to, you know, do the slow movements and stuff. This is all, uh, this is all fast, fast, fast. You give up? Now that you got a belly full of knife? Like, I didn't want to kill the guy. Yeah, this scene wasn't in the original. <laughs> but it is very important to the story. This is definitely from the books. Yeah, this is a scene that I always wished was in it. So like, he's got water coming from his eyes. Yeah. Have they never seen tears before? It's it's a big deal for them. You don't cry because it loses moisture. To give water to the dead means, you know, he feels badly even for, for the person he would kill. <laughs> he almost says it like with a French accent. <clears throat> and he hasn't seen the girl in his dream yet, has he? Yeah. Yeah, oh. she's the one that gave him the instruction. Oh, that was her. Okay. I thought her hair was... Different. No, it's just pulled back in a tight bun. Uh, okay. Later on, she lets it down when, well, she lets down her hair. I'm your wife now. <laughs> Actually, Samuel Proctor, that's probably the way it was intended. <laughs> I can't reach. He's a shorty. Yeah. Cremation chamber? Uh, what they're going to do is they're going to completely desiccate the body. Literally all the moisture is taken from it mm -hmm. and it becomes the property of the, the tribe. That's how precious water is.
That sounds like a lot of water. 33 liters? Well, it's not just what was in his body. It was also in what he was suit. responsible for, yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's like, you know, I wouldn't have killed your husband if he didn't attack me first. No, they know. That's that's the that's the way of their people. you need for it to be enough <laughs> so one of the things the books get into especially the later books is this concept of terraforming dune um apparently dune used to be a more moderate world and all the water <laughs> you know there is some in the in the atmosphere. A lot of it is underground. Um, but when the desert conditions can be overcome, it starts to become green. Problem is that means there's no place for the the, the, the worms to live. It needs to remain a desert plant, otherwise the 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 worms die and then there's no there's no spice. And uh, again, Samuel, you're, you're absolutely right. There is a lot of, um, and, and this was Frank Herbert's intent. Um, I think he drew a lot from um, the history of the Middle East um, and, and probably a lot of the Arabic language uh, when writing for the Fremen. They could have used some voice for it. Yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of parallels between Dune and Star Wars, and uh, some of them are obvious. Uh, it's very clear that that Dave uh, that uh, that George Lucas was uh, kind of ripping off Dune to to a degree. Now, does he float because he's so heavy? He, he is so heavy that he's got anti grav uh, suspensors on his belt. Yeah. <laughs> That poor cat. Yes. So we hadn't really talked about this before, but Thufir and um, um, Peter de Vries, uh, who was played by Brad Dorif earlier, they're mentats. They are human computers because computers are banned in this universe. Um, humans do the, the computations. And... It's so uh, advanced what they can do, they can almost, almost predict the future. I love that blue color, though. Yeah. <coughs> So yeah, Samuel Proctor, we're coming up to they're they're drawing off the water of life right now. They're showing it being uh they they've put a uh, a sand trout into the into water and it's 
dying and it's giving off the water of life. Oh, which is that poisony stuff. Yes. But then how do they separate the water from the poison? Or poison it, 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 it is the water of life. That's what oh. it is. Uh, and as a Bene Gesserit imbibes it, she is physically able to alter the chemistry of the poison within her body. And that's what makes her into uh, a Reverend Mother. Drink the Kool-Aid. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> uh, Samuel says, George looked at pretty much everything he enjoyed and could put his hands on uh, when he was developing Star Wars. Uh, Dune, New Gods, Searchers, John Carter, Flash Gordon, and much, much more. I've been... Making Google. Ah, oh, I'd be interested in uh, seeing more about that. So, Mama's now in charge. <coughs> So, just to be clear, the Reverend Mothers, uh, as part of this process of drinking the water of life, gain the memories of every Reverend Mother in their lineage yep. going back. I mean, to a small degree, it's kind of like, you know, having, you know, the Jedi having access to all the Force ghosts and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I gotta do what now? <laughs> So I don't know how they deal with this in the in the in the new dune. I haven't seen the second one yet. But but this is exactly the 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 the, the point of the book in this battle against the Harkonnens, you know, uh, he specifically says you know, we're going to destroy all of the the, the spice production. Uh, at, a, at a later point in the story, he says he who controls a thing, or he who destroys a thing controls a thing. And basically what they're talking about is terrorist tactics.
He's like, okay. Ow. <laughs> Break! <laughs> It's like, I'll try. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you do. don't want to be too close now. Yeah, like I said, this these these <laughs> voice modulators, I thought were brilliant. They're pretty cool. Basically, he vibrated the thing apart. Yeah. Paralyzed nerves shatter bones, set fire, and suffocate an enemy. It's interesting because I know that uh, the Department of Defense has been working on sound weapons. Using ultra-low frequencies, they can make you nauseous, disable you, vomiting. My name is a killing word. Yeah. So you see the winds blowing over the sands, and it kind of makes it look like an ocean of, of sand, like yeah. m rippling waves. He's like, can I do this how? Oh, he knows how. Just like he knew how to put on the uh, the suit. And when you see the size of these things, you realize this is no small feat. But I also, you also notice there's a bunch of kids there with them. This is not, you know, not just adults. Is that the thumper? Yeah. It's a lot bigger than the one that he was using. There is the mind killer. That's what he was saying earlier. Yeah. I think a whole generation of us have, have learned that mantra and used it in our lives.
Dun dun dun. My goodness. Yeah, that's a big one. I mean, look at that. It's like, holy cow. It's like bigger than a whale. It is just <laughs> massive. And the rope is for what? The rope is so the others can climb up. Huh. And then these pikes go into these little blowholes which there's some sensitivity there and he can use them to steer the thing yeah. now imagine riding one of those into battle imagine riding one of those into work each day <laughs> yeah See, the the driver gets a, an easy ride up. He just holds on and it pulls him up. Everyone else has to climb. It's kind of like in uh, The Mandalorian with uh, the Rancor. Yeah, kind of. They pronounce it Fedakin. I've also heard it pronounced Fedakin. I think this one, this uh, interpretation is better. And again, it's women, it's men, it's children, it's everyone. There are no civilians. Of course, they're saying all these noises, and I'm getting Blues Brother flashbacks of hut, 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 They could take out a couple in one shot if they aim proper. <laughs> exactly, Samuel Proctor. I had been hoping for some reference to the the Rancor being from Dathomir or something. Well, you asked him what he was saying. He told you, Moabdeeb. But we don't know. <laughs> yeah, because they don't need the spice, so. Right, exactly. <laughs> Which, of course, is impossible. <laughs> and you believe them? <coughs> 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 
And yeah, there's the Picard mullet. <laughs> yeah, Picard looks like he has uh, one of those automatic staplers. Yeah. <laughs> that day dawned when Arrakis lay at the hub of the universe with the wheel poised to spin. Book four, The Prophet. How many books are there? I don't remember. I mean, technically, this is still the first book of, you know, the Dune series. I don't understand why the chapters are broken up into books. So this is uh, a great um, depiction of exactly how serious it is. I mean, spice in Dune is like oil in the real world. If, if the desert nomads were to all band together and destroy all, you know, oil production, everything would come to a standstill. Yeah. Okay, Samuel, he's just announced he's got to drink the water of life. So, whereas the women who drink the water of life become reverend mothers, they gain all of the race knowledge of all the women in their lineage going all the way back, the Kwisatz Haderach will receive the memories of all the women and all the men going all the way back. He just said, all I'm seeing is darkness, so... Right. His future has gone from him? Um, they've, he's reached a, a, a point... How do, how do they describe it? His visions are like being in a valley, and he can't see beyond the next ridge. At least that's how it's described in the books. Sometimes at the tops of the 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 the, um, the crests, he could see all the different possibilities. But when he's in a trough, he can't see beyond. Right. <laughs> it's the worm.
And what this allows him to do is literally be able to see all possible futures from this point. And in the books, not here in this movie, but in the books, it scares the hell out of him and he can't do it. He can't rise to the mission he's called for and he leaves it to his son to do instead. dying no it's it's a weird way that Lynch decided to demonstrate as if all the the Reverend mothers are connected and so they know that the quiz that's Hatterack is arising or whatever and uh uh, Alia there, of course, is played by Alicia Witt. A very, very, very young Alicia Witt. Yeah. Oh, wrong place. Yeah. Samuel says uh, lots of Jungian concepts with these groups in Dune. The sexes doing what they do best uh, to the extreme. Yeah. This is why I say you don't have to mess with this. You know? The sleeper has awakened. That thing in his nose has got to be horribly uncomfortable. Desert. You had to work the title in there somewhere. Right. <laughs> Thank you, anonymous goat. Yeah, you thought we were fighting before. Now we're going to really kick some butt. Yeah. Well, and this this is the ability to see the future, right? You can predict what the enemy is going to do, where to strike. And they, they, they can't see you coming. The other thing is... The, the, the Bene Gesserit wanted to bring about the Kwisatz Haderach, but they thought they'd be able to control him. Under these circumstances, he's, he's a free agent. Yep. He owes allegiance to none of them. Now, another element is with all of these race memories, um if you don't have a strong sense of self, one of those personalities could take over. That's exactly what happens to Alia because she's an infant. She has no personality. So others are able to control her. Paul cannot be controlled by any of the Reverend Mothers that came before him because <laughs> he's like, uh, no. <laughs> you tell me what I need to know, then you shut up. 
That is basically what he's doing. Long live the fighters! <laughs> we have worn sign the likes of which God has never seen. <laughs> There's a worm. <laughs> See, and this is this is the difference, right? You had you had leaders that were able to rally the natives to um, to harness the uh, the sandworms and the power of the desert. And in all the time that the Harkonnens were there, they were they never even tried to do that. Samuel, no, I, I don't think this movie actually mentions the Orange Catholic Bible. Now that you mention it, I'm not sure that the Vinnie Del Neuve version does. It might do. And there's uh, Princess Irulan, who is, of course, the narrator of this story. <coughs> the women and children overpowered his elite fighting units. <laughs> oh, she she does this so well. It comes off so creepy. Yes, he is. You catch on quick. Now, what's strange <laughs> is why uh, 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 the Reverend Mother uh, Gaius Mohayim would actually know that stuff. Well, didn't little Chicky Boo put it into her head? Yeah, th this uh, this telepathy thing is is unique to this this movie boom atomic <laughs> wrong hostage pal <laughs> yeah exactly See, and the other thing, too, is ordinarily they wouldn't have used atomics on Arrakis because, 
you, you want to protect the spice, but right. he does not care. Yeah, I wouldn't be telling you this if you had any chance to prepare. He's already here. It's already happening. How you think you could do something about it? Yeah, exactly. The electric worms are the coolest, yeah. Though. Well, that here's the other thing too. I mean, <laughs> what are the Sandakar going to do against sandworms? <laughs> you may fire when ready. <laughs> I love the fact that they even have a uh, a sound module that's like uh, a big uh, anti uh, anti aircraft type uh, gun. And the worms are all like, ah, nah. Look what I yeah. Got. <coughs> yeah. This is the way it's supposed to be. Alia is supposed to kill the Baron. It's like a single M&M. &M.
this in my house now. <laughs> Kinda, yeah. He's like, I'm here and I'm taking over. Kill the old bat. This is a new scene. Yeah, I don't remember the scene. <coughs> He's like, no. Yeah, there was no way he was going to betray Paul. So how can you live like that with that exactly. pump and having to try and get your antidote every day? <laughs> well, that was what they were holding over him. Either you go kill him or or you won't get your, your antidote. <laughs> and he's like, nah, I don't want it anymore. <laughs> you didn't notice the red hair before? Oh, he's taunting him. Yeah, here's my, my uh, letter opener. Yeah, exactly. Well, I love the fact that he... Again, the the whole, you know, killing word thing was metaphorical in the book and literal here. And literally when it comes down to it, he does kill him with a word. Yeah. It's 
baseball spit paint doing so well. He's grandstanding. Okay, he's a ballerina. Ah, let him get under your skin there for a second there, pal. Yeah, I don't think so. <coughs> yup. Oh, his eyes just went white. I don't think he ever really did. He probably never did. Yeah, it's true. And this is how they should have handled the whole situation in the second one that I've been hearing about. She doesn't turn into a crying little baby. She doesn't turn against all of her beliefs. Like that history will call us yeah. lives. Yeah. Because like he said, in everything but name. Yeah. yeah. Seriously, old chick needs to go see a dentist. Yeah. <laughs> and I think you all see big change at the end here. No big uh, rainstorm. This this ends in a way that would perfectly match with the books. Oh, Spice Diver, you did a great job, whoever you are. Brad Dorf, yeah, he's amazing. Jose Ferrer as the Emperor. Linda Hunt. Oh, man. Still can't get past those eyebrows. I know, right? <laughs> I'm actually curious if there's anyone who's never seen this before. Yeah, is there anyone who's still with us uh, that has never... Yeah, no rain. Exactly, Heat Sinker. Is there anyone here who's never seen the David Lynch 1984 Dune in any form before? Just curious. What I also found interesting was because of the, the breadth of actors, you had so many different accents within like one family. 
Oh, yeah. You had the Duke Leto at, I think, a Norwegian accent. You have uh, Sting with his uh, British accent. Irish, I think. Is, is Sting Irish? I'm not uh, sure. No. Alexa, is Sting Irish or English? Sting is from United Kingdom. Yeah, thanks. That <laughs> helped us zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that is how our uh, so Samuel okay. Proctor's read the book. He's seen the original. Um, yeah, and uh, like I said, Samuel, the the Spice Diver edition is out there on on YouTube. It is three hours. We just did the the whole three hour run, so definitely go check it out. <laughs> this edit is incredible. Um, there. Like Tom was saying at the top of the show, they they must have worked from some some um, work prints and deleted scenes and so forth. They worked with deleted scenes. Yeah, they wow, worked with Steve deleted really scenes. Gets around. And uh, <laughs> this is like the third edition of it, and he's like cleaned it up as best he could, put in the after effects for the blue eyes where they weren't there before. Um. Lady V, yeah, you had said earlier she's going to check out the audiobook. I, you absolutely should. Um, but get yourself a copy of the book because there are references in there. The, the glossary of terms, the maps, they really help you uh, take all of this very rich lore and distill it in such a way that you can kind of conceptualize what's going on. Connie's read the book. I think I've read the book. For sure I read the book. And I've seen the, the movie several times. It's a nickname, Paddywhack. Give the dog a bone. There you go. So I think even the, the closing credits were all uh, completely reconstructed. So there you go. That was Spice Diver. And now, in matter, I know this... You've seen the original uh, Dune, 1984 Dune before. Mm -hmm. I think this was your first time. Seen um, the whole three-hour one, yeah. To, yeah, because I know it was mine. I'm sure you wouldn't have watched it without me, so. Uh, no. <laughs> so how are you feeling about it? Actually, Pretty I good? liked you it. You enjoyed it? Yeah. I did. I liked it a lot. Honestly, <laughs> this ending, I'd heard about it. I'm amazed. Th that ending was so much better. This is how they should have originally ended it. I'm so glad. If if nothing else, this ending was perfect. But uh, anyway, I think we've uh, belabored it enough. Uh, I I think I've said everything I needed to say throughout this. Uh, we we will probably be watching the original 1984 Dune later in September. You said yes, yeah, September. In fact, give me one second. I'll tell you exactly when. Uh, September 14th. September 14th. But um, we, we, we were doing this one special because we wanted to pull Tom in. Um, super appreciate the time he was able to give us. Uh, when we close up here, do me a favor. Get over to Mead Radio and uh, toss a coin to your uh, video jockey over there and let him know we appreciate him. All right? Yeah, absolutely. And for those who subbed to me tonight, I appreciate the subs. I appreciate the thumbs up. I appreciate you guys just being here. Yeah. Yeah, there are some, uh, some new people in the chat. I was happy to see you. You're always welcome. Um, usually I do movie rewatches uh, every other Saturday with, uh, let's see, is it this week is me? Yeah, this week is me. Um, so, this Saturday on my channel, we'll be watching. It's the Easter Beagle, Charlie Brown, and... Uh, the Easter Bunny's Coming to Town. Yeah. So those two, because they're really short. So we'll be watching those on Saturday. Um, so every other Saturday is me on on my channel for Retro Cinema. And for those of you who have heard me say this before, I'm going to just say this for all the, the newer people. Um... We have a really large film collection, and so now, apparently actually, not as big as Tom's, yeah, but it's not big. big as Tom's. We have over a thousand movies, and I started going through alphabetically. So currently, I'm in D, the letter D. So um, we made an exception for the Easter Beagle because, um, well, Easter, 
and then after that's going back to D with uh, Dawn of the Dead on April 13th and then going from there. So um, that's something for you to look forward to and of course every Thursday on my channel I have a different guest on so that we can talk about them, talk about their channels, find out more about them, introduce you to new people if you don't know them. In fact next Thursday, well actually let's go through the whole week so yeah. let's not miss any days. So. Um, well, first of all, again, I want to thank all of you who have stayed for the entire three hours of this film. I appreciate you. And I and really enjoy just spending this time with all of you. Um, so let's see, today's Thursday. So Friday, over on Last Call. So tomorrow night, uh, uh, Boomer and I will be discussing the sad state of Star Wars. Basically, uh, it was his suggestion. We just want to do a little bit of grousing, a little bit of ranting. Uh, and give our thoughts about the uh, the recent events. We'll probably talk a little dismal Disney, and uh, you know, just uh, just hang out. And of course, there will be drinking. So it may get more and more interesting as the night goes on. <laughs> That's tomorrow night. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow nine nine central, ten eastern yes. on my channel. Uh, let's see. Then Saturday, I already mentioned that. Uh, 9 Central, 10 Eastern, we'll be watching It's the Easter Beagle and uh, Easter Bunny come, is coming to town. But I think before that, isn't it Western Cinema for uh, or is it on Sunday? Uh, Sunday's Western Cinema. Okay. If, if, if deleted scenes, if you're still here, let us know, but I, I don't think uh, he's got anything on Saturday, so okay. I think the first well, thing Sunday, is uh, Sunday. Pretty much deleted scenes all the time. Deleted <laughs> scenes in Jedi Bill for uh, Western Cinema at three Central, um, and then well, actually, I don't know what he's doing this Sunday because this Sunday is Easter it's Sunday. Easter, yes. So, so I don't know if they're doing something or not because of the Easter holiday. Um, so just go to Deleted Scene channel. Um, he'll have his streams up if he's doing anything for Easter Sunday. Um, will Geeky Geezers be having a show on Easter Sunday? Uh, as far as I know, I mean, uh, we've been trading notes back and forth. So uh, we're going to be talking more gamer news. We're going to be talking lawsuits. Um, it, you know, there's, there's some stuff to talk about. So that is at uh, eight, 8 Central, eight Central 9, 9 Eastern. 9 Eastern. Um, and then let's see, Monday, a whole brand new movie night with Last Call. Yep. Uh, Mon Last Call is Monday night at the movies. We will be uh, watching Fred Astaire and Judy Garland in Irving Berlin's Easter Parade. It's a classic. I don't even know if I've ever done it on, on the channel before, but uh, you know what? It's uh, it's a little bit of a throwback for me. I'm kind of looking forward to it. I hope you'll enjoy it too. That's uh, 9 Central, 10 Eastern on Monday. And then Tuesday, we're at Sparkwood 21 on Delicia's channel for another episode of Twin Peaks. And yep. that is... Uh, is that also 9 Central? I it is 8.30 Central, oh. and uh, we should be starting right on time, because immediately after no, no. that... 7.30 Central. Yeah, I'm sorry. 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern. Yeah, yeah. those time zones, damn it. <laughs> because uh, immediately after uh, that, I will be jumping over to Rancor Steve's um, uh, uh, Rumble channel, because he has asked me back to uh to, to be with join the manly him. men yeah to join him on uh manorama yeah and then let's see wednesday there isn't anything that i'm aware of uh thursday back here over on thursday things my special guest would be mikey Suze or maybe Susie four so we'll be learning about him learning about his channel and it'll be another great time so we hope to see you for that um so that brings us our week in review <coughs> Any final words, darling? No, I want to thank uh, uh, Tom Connors, of course, for, for coming and joining us, for uh, bringing you all over here. I uh, hope you've enjoyed your time here. 
Um, and uh, and if you did, you know, hit that subscribe button, and we hope that we'll be uh, seeing you on uh, uh, future streams. Absolutely. And yeah, Sashi, and unfortunately, we uh, just, in fact, the movie just ended like, what, five minutes ago? Something like that. Yep. So we were just doing the, the weekend review. But you know how these things go. This, this video will still be up if you want to hear our commentary. Uh, and in this instance, the movie is available out there on the YouTubes. We watched the Spice Diver three hour uh, uh, edit of uh, David Lynch's Dune, so you can. Uh, you can go ahead and cue that up and watch that along with us in rerun. Absolutely. Um, and of course, the way I always end my streams, make sure that you are sub to everyone on the panel. Um, our special guest, Tom, had to drop out about an hour ago, but please make sure you go over to Mead Radio. You drop him a like, a sub. Um, and she's going to be on live after the show ends? He's live now. Oh, he's live now. Yeah. So, yeah, make sure you go over there. You do a Netter's Network raid. Um, show him some love. And, uh, you know, make sure, like I say, you, you like, share, and, uh, and subscribe. Uh, so show him the love over there. Also, make sure you're sub to everyone in the chat. And if you think you're already sub, go back and double check because YouTube likes to take those away. And for the uh, new subs I got tonight, thank you very much for those. I really do appreciate that. As well as all the thumbs up I've gotten for tonight's uh, show. It's It was a much longer one. Three hours. <coughs> well, uh, actually, three and a half. Yeah. From what I'm seeing here. So a much longer show than I normally do on a Thursday. Normally, it's just an hour long. So I do appreciate you all sticking with us. Uh, but I hope you had fun. I really do. And with that said... We can talk amongst ourselves, and that's all well, good, and fun. But it is so much more fun when you guys are joining us in the chat, and you're dropping your comments, questions, trivia, being goofy, whatever it may be. And it doesn't feel like we're separated by miles or continents in some cases. It feels like we're all hanging out in the same room, just enjoying each other's company and having a great time. And, you know, you can pass the popcorn, Troy. Okay, sorry. <laughs> and you guys, you know you're not just our friends. <clears throat> you guys are our family. We love you guys, and we appreciate you so very much. Yep. You can be anywhere right now, and you're here with us. It is so encouraging. I love seeing you guys here. I love seeing uh, you guys interacting with each other in the chat, interacting with the, the new people that come in and making them feel so welcome. So thank you all for that. Um, <clears throat> I hope you have a great, let's see, upcoming weekend. I always have to think what day it is. A great upcoming weekend, and we will definitely see you next time. Good night, and God bless. Take care.